Hello, 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 hello. This is Faye. Let's get right into it. Uh, this is the importance of customer service. Uh, I want to get right into it right now so that you are aware of what we're going to do today. So customer service uh, is also known as customer engagement. It's also known as relationship building, customer relationship. No matter what you name your customer service or your customer engagement, it is by far the key to your business. It's the key to your business because your business revolves around your customer. So let's face it, the customer is actually the business. Now in recent days, technology has changed so much so that we, we, don't, we just don't interact with people the way we have done in the past. This year, 2020, because of the pandemic, there have been a lot less face-to-face -face meetings and more virtual touches, more touches by telephone or FaceTime, more virtual meetings. And we've actually come to the point where everything seems to be uh, done by electronics or done digi digitally. We service customers a lot, lot differently than what we've done in the past, but that does not mean that the feeling of a personal touch can't be present. Let me give you an example. Bank of America, you know, everybody's heard of Bank of America. Bank of America is a very large bank. Throughout the country, throughout the world, Bank of America is known. Well, being a Bank of America customer for many, many years and being uh, what they call a priority customer, I started to receive emails and letters from Bank of America that says, go and meet Erica because Erica is your personal assistant. Now I'm thinking Erica is this person who if I need something or I can't get into an account or I can't find something or I need something, I can go to Erica in person and Erica will tell me what I should do or help me to get done what I need to get done. Well, let me tell you the shock of my life when I found out that Erica is a digital customer service entity. Erica does not exist in the flesh. So Bank of America has put me with a personal assistant whose name is Erica and probably is your personal assistant as well. But Erica is to do for me everything that the physical person may have done for me in the past. This is where our customer service has come. The definition of customer service is the assistance and advice provided by a company or individual to those people who buy or use its products or services. Now, it doesn't say that this is the process of selling to those people who buy or use your products or services. It says the definition is the assistance and advice provided. So it's assistance and advice that you provide that actually makes up customer service. We can probably all agree right now that because of this, customer service is kind of a big deal. It is a big deal. It's a really big deal because we never lose sight that our customer is our business. So I'm going to explore uh, the importance of customer service with you. And I'll start by saying that 85% of customer service is automated. Remember the story that I just 
share with you about Erica. My customer service at Bank of America is now automated. But you, you have come to a point in life where you hear a lot of please hold for the next available associate or if you're using an automated system, press one for claims, press two if you need to make a change in your plan, plus three if you need to change your address, press four if you want to pay your premium, press five if you want to open a new account. But now what if you just wanted to do something simple or just needed to ask just a simple question without going through a lot of automated systems. What if that were the case? Is there anyone that you could just call? And you notice that the automated system doesn't say to you, hit zero repeatedly if you wanna to speak to someone. That's not one of the choices. They want you to use the automated system. Now, that is one point of where we are in customer service. We've always known that if a customer is satisfied, then they're going to become a repeat customer. So if you can help a customer and genuinely, genuinely show that you want to help or you're available to help, you're gonna have a satisfied customer. And a satisfied customer means repeat sales. So it takes less time, less effort, and less money to keep a customer happy and have them buying more product from you or more services from you than it is to generate a new customer. Of course, you have to generate new customers but you have less time, less effort, less money if you are cultivating a great relationship through customer service with the customer that you already have. Statistics tell us that uh, most customers use customer service as a part of their decision-making. When they're making a decision about purchasing, regardless of what the purchase is, if it's a product or a service, 90% of the customers will consider customer service as a part of that decision. Statistics also tell us that if we can retain 5% of the customers, our 5% uh, retention rate will increase profits by 25 to 95%. Now that increase in profit comes from repeat sales and referral sales. So the fluctuation could be 25% or it could be 95% depending on how you're getting those increased sales as a result of retaining your customers. 17% of your customers will buy again if you provide them with good service. These are all answers to why you should be doing customer service, why you should make customer service important to your business. So in my business, I sell Medicare plans. So let me use an example of that 17% increase because of great customer service. So let's assume that I had a Medicare book of business of 400 people, 400 customers. So 17% of them referred other customers. 17% of 468, so that means that I now have 68 new customers or new prospects that I did not have to buy leads for. And the fact that they are referral customers, I'm gonna sell a greater percentage of them. It's a known fact in my business that 
when you purchase leads, you sell 10 to 20% of those leads. But if you have a referral lead, you're selling 50 to 70%. Now, I'm saying if you're doing great custom, customer service, it's possible you can sell 90% of those customers. 90% of 68 customers means you now got 60 new customers who have generated residual income for you, not to count the sale income, but residual income of $22 a month, which is $1,320 a month for the 60 people times 22. And if you take that for the year, that's an additional $15,840 that you're adding to your bottom line that's been created by your satisfied customer. Does this make sense? I'm hoping that it does. So I, I'm thinking though that you, you got the point. So now when people think of customer service, most people think of customer service as being when you're out shopping in the mall and the person who uh, helps you in the retail store, uh, the person who actually helps you with the purchases that you're making while you're shopping. And the other thing that we think of most often in customer service is restaurants or eating, where people are tending to our meals. So we're always looking for great service. Sometimes the great service surpasses the great food. And we just want to have a great experience. However, when you think of it, it's not just those situations where customer service comes into play. Customer service is everywhere, every opportunity that you have to speak with someone else about your product or your services. So everyone, everyone is your customer. This is, this, this is just reality, that everybody is your customer. You first need to know who that customer is. So I would ask the question right here, who is your customer? Who is it that you feel that your customer should be. Once you can identify who your customer is, then you can start to move into preparing the next step, step that we're gonna talk about real quickly, your personal mission statement, because you want to be able to service that customer. Before, before I go any further, though, let me, let me just tell you about myself and why I think that I can certainly help you. I feel confident in knowing that if there's something that you need in terms of customer service and how to effectuate the skills of customer service, I can do that for you. I'm a sales strategist. I live in Central Florida. I graduated from Albertus Magnus College in New Haven, Connecticut, magna cum laude uh, with a degree in business management. And I've spent over 20 years in the insurance industry. I've been in the em group employee benefits segment, large group and unions. Uh, some of my customers were Savings Banks Association of Connecticut and Yale University. I've been in group and individual Medicare sales. I've been a Medicare sales manager. I am a final expense expert. I'm an entrepreneur. My husband and I owned a business that grew to be the largest uh, privately owned cleaning business in New Haven, Connecticut, and expanded that business to two other states, Virginia and Florida. So I'm an enterprise owner. I'm the person who sees ideas, who comes up with ideas and know how to work things differently. And the result is that I get things done. So what I'm gonna go through 
are three things. We're going to go through the personal mission statement because that's what actually fosters your customer service. But that also feeds into your mindset. You have to have the right mindset in order to provide genuine customer service. And then I'm going to give you a few tips that you can use just now in doing business the way we do business virtually at this particular point in our lives. So let's start with the mission statement. Um, everybody knows Napoleon Hill. I, I'm sure you know Napoleon Hill is the person who wrote Think and Grow Rich in 1937, and it's among the 10 best-selling self-help books today. Well, some organizations pr produce long, rambling mission statements where nobody ever reads. However, Napoleon Hill suggests that you read your mission statement every morning and every evening. And you're certainly not going to do this if it's going to take you 20 minutes to read it. And it's not something that you can recite very easily. This is my mission statement, my personal mission statement. I am good at what I do. Today, I will help each person I contact to discover their purpose and live to their potential. I am good at what I do. Today, I will help each person I contact to discover their purpose and live to their potential. This is the mantra. This is the mission statement I repeat to myself every morning. Napoleon, please forgive me. I don't do it every evening, but every morning, this is what I'm repeating to myself. So now let's break this down because there are actually three things that you need, and here's where you may wanna take a note. There are three things that you need to build your own personal mission statement that's gonna drive your mindset and your ability to offer great customer service. You need to have your mission statement say to what you are committed, who you're going to serve, and what sets you apart? Those three things. To who you are committed, who will you serve, and what sets you apart? Now, let's break my mission statement down based on those three things. So what am I committed to? I am committed to improving my customer's life. I am definitely committed to helping each person to live their life to their potential. So that's my commitment. My commitment is to help them to discover their purpose and live to their potential. Who will I serve? I'm going to serve each person that I contact today. Now, I'm not all over the place and you shouldn't be either. I did not say that I am going to serve everybody because I cannot serve everybody. My expertise is in sales and particularly insurance sales. And then if you bring those niches down, it's Medicare sales and life insurance sales. The other parts of insurance, I know, but those are my areas of expertise. So I'm not saying I'm going to serve everyone, but I'm going to do the best I can for each person that I come in contact with who are in my niches. And what sets me apart? The fact that I am good at what I do and I know I am good at what I do and I am always constantly learning more about what I do sets me apart. I am good at what I do and I know I'm good at what I do. So let's take a look at some of the 
corporate mission statements and and see if we can try to identify how they put those together to engage customers. The first one is to save people money so that they can live better. We can almost, I mean, almost anybody knows right away, this is Walmart. And Walmart does this very, very well. They save people money. And obviously people save money. They spend more money at Walmart too. But it helps those people to live better because they can go to Walmart and they can get their groceries, they can get their furniture, they can get everything that they need for their lives in Walmart. The next one is a rather long one, committed to provide every citizen of the world with the best service of the air travel to the extensive selection of destination possible. This particular one is from American Airlines. It's a long one. And because American Airlines is global, it's a global company, it does mention every citizen, it mentions best as a superlative and extensive. So they are global. The next one, we strive to offer our customers the lowest possible prices, the best available selection, and the utmost convenience is from none other than Amazon, who does the same concept that Walmart does in terms of lowest possible prices, but at the end, Amazon has actually taken the and created an entirely different way of doing business at by giving the customer the utmost convenience. And now Walmart does the same thing, but not at the level of Amazon because Amazon's Commitment is to provide that utmost convenience for the customer. The next one, to be the world's favorite destination for discovering great value and un unique selection is from Subway. When Subway started in Stratford, Connecticut, uh, as just a little sandwich shop, who thought they would have that sprawling uh, campus and Subway franchises all over the country and all over the world. Whoever thought of it, but this has been their mantra to be the world's favorite destination for discovering great value and unique selection. Aetna, of course, Aetna Insurance to help people achieve health and financial security by providing easy access to cost-effective high quality healthcare. And we have a couple of other uh, insurance, but this one to inspire and empower people and organizations to achieve their highest vision in a context of love and joy is from none other, my hero, Jack Canfield. Jack Canfield is great. I mean, he has such a great spirit. He he combines mind, body, and spirit in everything that he does. He gives back so much of what he has received. And he just, just has a beautiful spirit. Uh, our mission is to help people live healthier lives and to help make the health system work better for everyone. That's from the United Healthcare Group. I think you've gotten the, the gist of how these companies, these corporations have developed mission statements that revolve around their customer engagement. I get back to my personal mission statement. I am good at what I do. Today, I will help each person I contact to discover their purpose and live to their potential. So now, do you need help? with creating your personal mission statement? Do you need help with putting those three points together for yourself? Stay tuned, stay till the very end. I have something for you, just stay at the end. So the next part of this is about mindset. Mindset is, 
if you think you can, you can. And if you think you can't, then you can't. Henry Ford said, whether you think you can or you think you can't, you're right. So that's your mindset. You've got to have the right mindset. Remember my mindset? I am good at what I do. So mindset includes positivity, respect, and focus. Speak in the positive. Uh, and by that, I mean, no matter what is asked of you, try to find a way to express it in a positive manner. An example might be a question that you get from a customer. Customer has just purchased uh, a dental plan and they want to know, uh, are implants covered? Are implants covered on my dental plan, they may say. Now, most plans, if they are connected to the Medicare Advantage plans, do not cover implants. And there are several ways that you could respond to that. You could say most, most Medicare Advantage plans do not cover implants. You could say, no, your plan does not cover implants. You could say, I'm not sure. I can check to see if it covers implants. But a different way of thinking of this because of your positive mindset might be, Mr. Customer, it appears that implants are excluded. However, the extractions required for the implant are covered at 80% after the annual deductible of $50. So now what you've done is you've brought the customer back to the fact that he can't get an implant unless that tooth that he has is already taken out. So that the plan is going to help him with that, but the plan's not going to implant it back into the spot where the extraction was done. So in thinking of answering, you didn't just say, no, it's not covered you gave the customer a little bit more and that's what's required of customer service, a positive response, but a, a response that gives a little bit more. Respect is a part of your mindset. And here is where you identify yourself clearly when you meet someone and you be sure that they understand and know your name. Often I will say, I'm Faye with an E, that's F-A-Y-E. And if I'm on the phone, often I say it's Faye, F is in Frank, A-Y-E, Horton, H-O-R-T-O-N, and I spell it. So the person knows my name. By saying it's Faye with an E, that kind of sticks in their head. If they never have to write my name or spell it out, that's fine. But in their head, they know that it's Faye with an E. They realize who I am. Once I'm able to let the customer know who I am, then I can go into finding out who they are, how to pronounce their name, how what would they prefer that I use when I'm speaking with them. Why is this important in respect? Why is it important in customer service? When you know someone's name, and you're able to use that name in the conversation, you can control the conversation. Example, we are, I am meeting with Faye and Faye is telling me all of the problems that she's having with her insurance plan. And she's going into all of the problems she's ever had with all other insurance plans. The information that Faye is sharing may not be relevant to get to the problem that she's having, solve it for her and hold that relationship of good customer service. So in order to bring Faye back to the focus, 
I might say, well, Faye, when I call Faye's name, she's going to stop talking and she'll listen. Then I'll ask the question, Faye. So it sounds like you're having this particular issue. Let's look at that. So now I'm controlling the conversation and I've used the name of the person. Now, it's only respectful that when you first meet someone, ask them, do you mind if I call you Faye or should I call you Mrs. Horton or Mr. Horton? Whatever the relationship, you know, develop that at up front, what that should be. Customer service equals customer engagement equals customer sales. So sticking that customer engagement in between customer service and customer sales just improves your customer service skills. You are taking care of the customer by engaging them and helping them to solve whatever issue they're having. Now, what do you need to have uh, the right mindset. You need to revisit your personal mission statement daily. Read or listen to materials that will help you to grow daily and stay focused. Stay focused on what that personal mission statement might be. Now let's look quickly into skills and techniques. For skills and techniques, you must be a good customer. How are you going to deliver customer service if you aren't a good customer? You have got to be a good customer. You must be a good customer. So each time that you're in a position where you're on that side of the table, think about what you say, think about how you act, Think about how you respond. This is one of those situations where you will remember your mother said, do unto others as you will have them do unto you. When those telesales people call you, don't be extremely rude. Ask them nicely not to call you again. So creating a relationship with your customer is a, uh, definitely important. you got to meet the customer where they are. And I don't mean physically, but you've got to get into the mindset of the customer in order to be able to provide the level of customer service to that particular customer that's needed. Every customer has a different level of customer service. Some people want you to contact them constantly. Some people do not want you to contact them. Some people want you to be available immediately when they call. Some people will understand. So you set those parameters. You set those um, controls, how you will operate your business and realize that every customer is different. Everyone is your customer and everyone is different. The tone that you use when you're speaking with the customer should always be one that is upbeat, that is uplifting. Your words should be encouraging for the customer and always genuinely have the customer feel that you're there to help them. Now, I don't want to gloss over and let you think that all customers are going to be just so it's going to be a slam dunk no matter what you do for them. No, you're going to have customers that are going to be difficult. And I use difficult loosely because you're going to have customers that are just that way. And life has treated them or brought them to that. Their lives have brought them to that. So your understanding and your consideration at that point is, and let me tell you, you will feel really, really happy if you're going to be the person that breaks through that barrier with that person and you're able to understand them a little bit, 
and get them to move a little inch by inch to your side, they're gonna be your best customers. Speak to your customer as they speak. Don't use, you know, superlatives that the customer may not use. Don't use um, acronyms. Say things the way they are. Use the customer's words. Repeat their words back to them. This makes the customer feel like one, you listened to them. And two, you understand them. And three, you're not selling them anything because those were their words. Listen, ask questions. Ask questions and ask questions and ask questions. Ask one question, listen for the answer. Ask another question that comes from that answer. Ask another question. Repeat the question back to be sure that you understood if the customer is asking a question of you. Repeat that question before you answer it. Don't be always quick to answer. Now, here's a tip. Write this down. Because now the way we do business is a lot different from when what we have done. However, you all know everybody has a smartphone. Everybody can do email. Most people can do text. So that means that there are so many ways that you can connect with your customer that will put a bright spot in their lives. And it could be something simple like when the customer calls you, you send that text back that says, I'm busy right now, but I will call you back. Something as simple as that. So this is something you want to ask the customer. When you get the customer's phone number, if you already have it and you're calling the customer because they called you, verify the phone number and simply say, is this your cell phone? Oh, great. Do you receive text messages? What's better for you if I send you a text or if I send you an email? I like to stay in touch with my customers, so I just want to be sure. Now, a few, a few, a very few of your customers may not have these capabilities, but most of them will. So here is your way to send your birthday greeting, your holiday greetings, your welcome to the new season greeting, whatever it is. And you can use mass texting services that will keep can keep your customers abreast of what's going on with your business. So this is important. Write it down. Take a note. Get the cell phone. Be sure it's a cell phone and find out if they do accept and do get text messages. Explain that if you send a message by text or email, and you ask a question, you'd like for them to respond to you. Of course, you got to know your product, you got to know your service, and you got to know your company. That's a whole different, another subject, not customer service, but it's just that you need to know what you're talking about before you start talking to the customer. And always tell the truth. Be truthful, but be tactful. Words are important. You can say it like it is. Don't, don't sugarcoat it or beat, it or beat around the bush. Um, in a lot of trainings that I've done, we have actually learned how to spin certain things um, so that it sounds a little differently. But I've found overall in all my years of experience, if you're truthful and to the point, and you're able to show the customer why what you're saying is true, that's the best way to express it. Be accessible, listen before you respond, and know what you say. Those are three things that will keep your skills and the techniques that you use for customer service handy. Be accessible, if someone calls you, 
return the call, send a text, send an email, do acknowledge it somehow. Do not let a phone call go, you know, for months and the customer has to call you back. Make sure that you are able to respond, be accessible. And if you are so busy that you're not able to do that, hire an assistant. Hire someone who can return your calls, at least let the other person know that you did receive a call and you're going to take care of it. Listen before you respond. It's not always necessary to just talk off the top of your head, know what you're going to say. And when you say it, know that it is true. And always smile, even behind the mask now that we wear because of the pandemic. If you're smiling, it's showing in your eyes. Believe it or not, it is true. I can tell if someone is smiling or frowning behind their mask. You try it. Try it if you don't believe me. Now, do you need help with training your team or helping them with some customer service skills and techniques? A particular problem that might be slowing down the growth of your business? Is there something specific to your business that you think can be helped by engagement of your team? Do you need help with developing your skills for customer service? Do you need help in identifying that problem and helping to find ways to resolve it so that you can pass it on to your team? Remember, regardless of when they were born, how computer literate they are, or how they like to communicate, everyone wants good customer service. And if you ask the right questions, if you listen to their answers and respond quickly and effectively, that's exactly what they will receive from you, good customer service. Is it important for you to see a $5,000 to $10,000 increase in your sales? What would a 17% increase in customers do for your business? Are you at the point where you're ready to create customer sales with customer service? Do any of these things resonate with you and your business? Do you want to see $5,000 to $10,000 increase in sales, what would a 17% increase in customers do for your business? Are you ready to create customer sales with customer service? Now, if you need help with your team training or you need help just honing the skills that you already have and you need help with those, there's several ways that you can do that. But one of them is we have a master um, class. We have a customer service online course and it's called Mastering Customer Service. Mastering Customer Service includes customer service defined, customer service developed and customer service delivered. So what do you need to do to get into this online course? You need to register now to get the masterclass pricing. Because you're watching this video, you are going to be able to do the class for much less than what the class price will be. The online course, Mastering Customer Service, you can take at your own pace. It includes access to a Q&A. So you have access to me while you're taking the course for questions and answers. You of course have access for texting or emailing or however you want to, to communicate with me. And the course, once you're in the course, you have unlimited access to the course. There will be group reviews and updates which you are invited to join. And you receive the book, my book, Amazon best-selling author book, Customer Service Equals Customer Sales. 
All of this is included in the course, Mastering Customer Service. Let me tell you about the modules. So customer service defined doesn't mean that I'm just gonna read to you the definition of customer service as we did at the beginning of this particular video. But instead, what you're gonna learn is how to evaluate and identify the issues for quick resolution that are within your business, your own particular business. We learn this, we learn what's specific for you when you sign up for the course, my assistant or myself will contact you to find out exactly what your business is and you will be able to learn and identify resolution for issues within your business. You'll be able to develop leadership skills and customer service for yourself and for your team or for your team. You can certainly invite your team to join with you. This course will help you to align customer service with your mission statement, your company goals, and cultivate team engagement and learn to measure your results. That's the key. Measure what you've done as a result of customer service. Also, module two is customer service developed. So this is where you recreate the roles that reflect great customer service delivery by aggressively following up and learning ways of following up and setting in place plans for following up with issues within your company or potential issues within your company or your business before they actually blow up. So you will develop some patterns of outreach for customer service. You'll learn problems, problem solving that is specific to your company vision and your personal mission statement. For customer service delivered, in this module, you're gonna learn to respond effectively and naturally to a variety of scenarios. Now there's absolutely no way that we can possibly come up with every scenario that you're gonna face in your business, but you will have a good sense for the most part of the ones that most often come up and how to handle them. And you will also have, remember from the previous modules, those steps in place that you're following up with the customer either one-on-one -on -one or on a group basis, through group texts or through group emails that keeps your customers engaged and keeps you and your business, your product or your service in the forefront of that customer's mind. So in module three, you're gonna learn to be proactive in using the texts and email templates that you can send to customers that will keep them engaged. The name of the course is Mastering Customer Service. It's an online course. And what do you need to do? You need to register now to get the masterclass pricing. This course is going to be available January 11th. And January 11th, the price is going to be different. So for you, who are watching now, this master course, Mastering Customer Service will be $59. Regularly priced $197. You're getting the course for less than 50% off. Now, if you just need help with developing your personal mission statement, we can help you with that as well. So if all you need to do at this point in your life, you know your business, you're not having you know, customer service issues that need to be identified and patterns set up and strategies developed, but you do need a personal mission statement. You need a personal mission statement that you can wake up every morning and say to yourself, 
I'm good at what I do. And today I'm going to help each person to find their purpose and live better. If this is what you need, you can do that separately. It's a one-on-one -on -one session and the cost is $19. Now, if you want to do either of these separately, Mastering Customer Service Course, pre-sale for $59, email me at fayhorton9 at iSellMedicarePlans.com. If you want to do just the personal mission statement for $19, Email me at fayhorton9 at icellmedicareplans.com. If you want the bundle, the Mastering Customer Service course pre-sale priced at $59 plus the personal mission statement at 19 and you bundle the two together for $69, you can get that at bit.ly forward slash customer service series. That's B-I-T dot L-Y customer service series. This is Faye Horton, and I have presented to you the importance of customer service. Let me know if there's anything that I can answer for you. My telephone number is 407 340 6282.